Now, I spoke with Kathleen Siders for a more in-depth look at the global food trends. She's a marketing professor at Boston College. And I asked her if Kraft's merger with Heinz will be good for consumers' tastes and their wallet. It's good for the consumer because it's going to allow these companies to operate more efficiently and to keep prices low. And in order to compete globally, which they have to do at this point in time, keeping the prices low and running these efficient distribution operations is just critical. Some people would argue that the, some of the foods that these companies make aren't exactly the healthiest. And I, I'm sure there's another side of this coin as well. But in general, companies, whether you're in America or around the world, are trying to make healthier foods because that is a trend, right? Consumers have aspired to healthier eating for many decades. It's a trend that's been tracked for a, a long time and the shape shifts over time. So we see gluten-free and organic and plant-based foods and all kinds of uh, different trends come into this. But it is a long-term trend. It's certainly not going to go away. The thing about these companies is they have very vast brand portfolios. So we may think of certain brands that Heinz and Kraft have in their portfolios, but they have a diverse set of brands. So they also include natural brands and sometimes even organic brands, specialty brands. So this helps them offset their risk uh, and to meet these changing consumer preferences. Some of the newest and uh, hottest products out there aren't necessarily created by the, the big giant food makers that we would generally think of. A lot of them are created by uh, mom and pop operations, uh, regional uh, food manufacturers, and I'm just curious on your thoughts. D do you think this increases the likelihood of sort of food innovation when it comes to, to healthy foods? We find that uh, some of the most exciting foods have been created by entrepreneurial outfits. A lot of talented entrepreneurs get into the space and they do exciting things and they build them and then the companies acquire them. And this is why you see Coca-Cola with Adwala or you see Kellogg with Cashy, or you see um, Kraft with Capri Sun and different other brands. So, so that's an acquisition kind of game for the companies. They have the cash, they can buy the brands, and then they have the option to invest in whichever brands make sense to be invested in. So when we talk about food trends, we can see what you and I might go to a grocery store and what we might pick out. That's one way to tell. The other is, is what happens when you and I go and want to go have lunch together and we pick a restaurant. And you look at the different, not just chain restaurants, but uh, some of the newer ones as well. Um, it runs the gamut from healthy to unhealthy. And a lot of people say that this sort of fast food healthy trend is certainly here to stay. Or you could argue that traditional fast food companies are going to become healthier. This is a critical trend. And Everyone in the food business is responding to it and has to respond to it in terms of aspiring to eat healthier foods. So we see that. I think the, the fast, fresh uh, companies like uh, Chipotle or like even Panera or others, I mean, they certainly are riding the wave of that. And uh, also we see a lot of prepared foods coming out of uh, Whole Foods, companies like that, about 50 percent at least. Uh, of sales are foods prepared outside the home, so that's a critical category. And um, McDonald's uh, has to change, and they try to change, but also sometimes they try to change and there's a lot of failure involved because a lot of times consumers say, this is what we want, uh, this is what we're going to eat, and yet uh, they don't. You know, this is kind of a famous gap, a famous discrepancy between what people say they want to eat and what they really do eat. So. Um, I, I guess, in short, what, what is the best way to, to keep not just Americans healthy, but, uh, you know, consumers around the world healthy? Is it more regulation? Is it more disclosure in terms of what you're eating? Is it maybe eating less of the bad stuff and more of the good stuff? Is it a, a program that tells me which stuff is good and which stuff is bad? I'm no nutritionist here, but uh, I think science uh, agrees that it's being able to moderate and balance. There are also uh, other things that are critical drivers in foods. Uh, people are so price sensitive, price conscious. Convenience is important. Uh, breakfast cereal is no longer convenient enough uh, for uh, many younger consumers. Uh, they want to have a bar they can carry that's more portable. So you find this uh, price and convenience and variety seeking also having a, a huge influence on what these companies do and, and need to do which is why this kind of consolidation uh, really can create an easier path for them 